Hello, and welcome to the lecture on Six Characters in Search of an Author, Act 3. In this lecture, I'll be giving you some brief information about the last act of the play Six Characters, and then we'll also be looking a little more in detail at the last act and at the play as a whole through the exam review, which will be posted in the future folder. So please be aware that although these lecture notes are shorter, you'll need to continue looking at the last act of the play through the exam review as you prepare to take the exam. So for our final week of reading and discussion of this play, we will address the literary theory of reader response and explore how this theory can bring closure both to the play six characters and to our course this semester. So as I mentioned, this week our lecture notes are quite a bit shorter so that you have a chance to practice reader response before I give more details about the text. If you don't plan to participate in the optional discussion, you can go ahead and look at the exam review document for more information about Act 3. Reader response theory may be the most familiar type of interpretation that you will learn. In it, the audience and reader, that's you, are the focus of creating meaning in the text. Rather than examining the text's author, history, or its cultural implications, reader response theory focuses on how the reader participates in the text in order to give the text meaning. If we interpret a text using reader response theory, we would look for places in which we actively engage in the text according to our own unique and individual backgrounds. You would think about what you think the text means, how it relates to your own life, your experiences, or your thoughts. In this model, the author creates a text, but it has gaps in it, and these gaps allow you to interject your own connections and interpretations into the text, making the reading experience unique to you. This is why, if you reread a text that you have loved as a child, you may have a totally different experience of it later in life. Perhaps you loved a particular book in your teens, but when you reread it, it seems stale or simplistic. The text hasn't changed, of course, but you have, and reader response theory examines how your reading experience changes your interpretation of the text. Although reader response theory privileges the individual's reaction to the text, it also acknowledges consensus. We are all unique readers, but somehow many of us might read the text the same way. This is due to the fact that the author has provided some structure to the text and that sometimes our cultural and life experiences might be similar to one another. We fill in the gaps in a similar manner to one another. However, most reader response theorists valid value fluidity in the text and believe that if you can present an argument and support it with evidence from the text, then the interpretation becomes valid. You give the text meaning and you provide the authority for this meaning. This week we will apply reader response theory to act three of six characters. I also want you to consider your reaction to the play as a whole. This means that you are going to provide the analysis of the text based on your own unique reaction to it. As you read, consider the following questions. What do you find most important about the text? What interests you, frustrates you, or excites you? Is there any place that the text fails you or confuses you? What do you think the text means and why is it important to study? Or is it important at all? As mentioned earlier, since I'm asking you to provide your own analysis, I'm going to limit my notes about the action of the play. However, I am going to model reader response for you below for one or two points so that you can get a feel for how it usually sounds. You may found, find that you've been practicing this theory all semester without realizing it. So for my particular response, I thought it was interesting that there is a discussion about how literature challenges our ideas of the self. It's pointed out in Act 1 that we may have multiple selves or that people only see one part of our personalities. In Act 3, the father says that the characters, since they are eternally fixed, are a reference point for us as we try to determine who we are. If we think of the characters as representing art or literature, I thought this section could be the author's way of saying that literature gives us a stable place from which to analyze ourselves. If the characters are unchanging, but we are always changing, then literature can be a way to measure changes in ourselves. What do you think? Is this a function of literature? I also tried to imagine viewing the ending of the play. The action is very confusing and goes from argument to death rather quickly. Then we as readers aren't told if the characters of the boy and the girl are dead or if they are pretending. 
Like the actors, we aren't sure what's real and what is not. I thought this unstable conclusion was interesting, even if frustrating. It leaves the reader and the audience unsettled rather than giving us closure. Why would an author do this? What does he want us to feel if he refuses to resolve anything for us? I thought the ending also relates to literature again here. We want stories to do certain things for us, or to be safe, or to tell us things about ourselves and the world. Instead, this play implies that art and literature have limitations, especially when we don't acknowledge the difference between art and reality. So what do you think? I want you to think back on your experience of reading and all that we've learned this semester. We've tried to connect literature and story to the creation of identity and self. Think about how these themes emerge in six characters as well. I will say more about these connections in the exam review next week, but for now, consider adding your own perspective through reader response to this week's optional discussion. Thanks.